Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, Today, well, I would like to begin by thanking uh, Kristen Chen and her family. Uh, Today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, In in replace of the sermon, we're going to show a video of... um, our Sunday school, but basically our children's Sunday school class doing a play. Now each family recorded their part on their own and then Kristen edited them together. So I I think everyone's really going to enjoy it. We still will have a children's sermon so the kids the kids don't get off. I'm still going to ask them some questions. <laughs> but um, but then um, then we're going to show, show the video. So they're really going to be the stars today. Um, other than God is the, is the true star. But they're going to be focused <laughs> a little more today. So it's a really neat uh, video. Um, so I'd like to thank all the families that were involved and took time to do that. And again, thank, a thank you to Kristen Chen for um, organizing it and putting it all together. And personally, I'd like to thank her that I, I, got a, I didn't have to prepare a sermon this week. I, I love to preach, but it, it, I, won't, I won't lie. I do like a, to get a break now and then, so I don't. Um, which does bring me to next Sunday. I'm going to take another break. I'll be here, but our service will be Lessons and Carols, which I, do, I honestly think is a beautiful service. But I'm not going to preach next Sunday either. But I will be preaching this Thursday for Christmas Eve. So we will have a 7 o'clock and a 9 o'clock worship service. Uh, At least one of those services will be recorded and then put onto YouTube for for everybody to watch. Um, So we, we have that coming up. I believe we still could use a reader for Christmas Eve. For, I guess for both services. So if you're coming to one of those, um, and if you'd like to read the lessons, please let me know. So I'll read it for 7 o'clock and then one for 9 o'clock. So that's this, this Thursday. Um, and also today at 5 o'clock, I had sent out a link. Uh, if there's On Zoom, there's going to be a blue Christmas service done by the uh, Frederick Lutheran Conference. Um, I record it just to, I have a brief reading in it, uh, but a bunch of us um, have a little small part that we recorded either at our church or at our home, and um, that's been edited together. So that's today, and if you, if that's lot, 5 o'clock on Zoom, I, I didn't check, they were supposed to set up a um, YouTube channel for the Frederick Conference. So if you don't have to watch it at 5 o'clock, it should be made available uh, later. So I'll, I'll have to check for that and then email that out. So that's coming up. If you have any directory information, if you could get that to me this week. And um, I believe those are all the announcements I have. Are there any announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, that's good. Yes, so um, Anthony Glover. Okay, Anthony, for those watching at home, Anthony Glover, uh, his procedure, everything went well. Uh, received some good news there, but, um, but we'll, of course, pray for him this week for just continued healing. Um, so, but thank you for the update. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
I invite the congregation to please rise. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the water of your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, also with you. and let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draw near.
let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and the first lesson is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving around, about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be the prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forevermore before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. And let us read responsively from Luke chapter 1, verses 46b through 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your holy servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. Passing down the mighty from their thrones, lifting up the you have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have, you have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. I invite the congregation to please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The, then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite the children forward if you just want to sit at that front pew again. Okay, good morning. Now today, I want to talk to you about three people, or maybe I should say three beings. Two of them are women, and one of them is an angel. Oh, well, you already, get, that was my next question. I was first going to ask you who, who the woman, the one woman might be. So you got it right, Mary. And, and um, who was Mary? Who was she? Wait, the servant of God, which is true. What else did you say? Why she's so important to us, especially during Advent and Christmas. Who is she? Mary is the. What's that? What? Well, she's the. She's the mother, of who? Jesus. Jesus. Good. 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 Mary's the mother of Jesus. Now, how did Mary find out she was going to have a baby named Jesus? The, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel told her. Excellent. Right. So the, an angel came. I have a little, little picture here. Not the best. but So that's supposed to be Mary. And then an angel came to her. They don't show a picture of the angel, but his name is Gabriel. That's right. one of the few angels in the Bible named. But Gabriel came to her and uh, told her that, he said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then he told Mary that she would have a baby and that she would name him Jesus. Okay? And again, all this, this came to a surprise to Mary. She wasn't expecting this. And, and more important, what we need to remember is Mary is an excellent role model for us. So she's somebody who we should try to follow, okay? Mary's very important. Um, but again, Mary is surprised when the angel comes to her and tells her that she's going to have a baby because Mary is not yet married. Now, she'll get married. Do you know who she, the, man, the name of the man she marries, Marie? Who, who does she marry? Who's her husband? Well, God, in a way, that's, that's really good. That's, that's excellent, but Joseph. She marries a man named Joseph. But you are, you are kind of right. Some people, some people say, I'll throw this out here, because um, some people say that Mary is a threefold relationship with God. That she's the um, mother, no, I'm sorry, she is the daughter of the father, 
mother of the Son, and spouse of the Holy Spirit. So that was a good, good point. But she also marries a man named Joseph. Okay, But they're not married yet. And this angel Gabriel tells her she's going to have a baby. And that puts her in a very scary situation. Okay, um, But you know what Mary says to the angel? Somebody did kind of say it earlier. Right, she's the servant of God and that she would do what God wants. In our Bible lesson, she says, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So Mary, one reason she's so important to us is Mary is a person who had great trust in God, or we could say great faith in God. And she's telling the angel and she's telling God that that. Um, that she's willing to follow God no matter how scary it might be. So she's willing to trust and follow God no matter how scary it might be. Now, God does not mean, uh, mean to scare us, but God wants us to always trust him, and sometimes God wants us to do things that are difficult. So we're soon going to watch this video that you're all in, and that took some hard work. You had to you know, learn your lines and and prepare for it, but you did it because you could, it was a way to tell other people about Jesus. So that's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to trust in Him, uh, even if it might be even if it might be hard work, something something a little scary. And that's what Mary did. She trusted in God. She says, "Here I am. I'm your servant. I'm going to do this." So she's really important. Now, I'd want to just very, very briefly bring up one other woman, because today is December 20th. And today, um, Lutherans, Lutheran Christians remember another woman named Katharina von Bora Luther. Have you ever heard of her? Katharina von Bora Luther. She's not in the Bible, but she was a good follower of God. At a very young age, she dedicated herself to God. She became a nun. I don't know if you know what that is, but what's that? I didn't quite hear. Oh, okay. Yep. So, but she, she dedicated herself to, to God. She became a nun. She eventually left being a nun, but she married a famous pastor. Do you know who her husband is? That's Martin Luther. Okay, and his name's again on our church, St. Mark's Lutheran Church. So that was, they married, they were married, and she, she spent her life uh, telling other people about Jesus. So those are two other people that are good examples. Martin Luther, and then his wife, who we remember today, Katharina von Bora Luther. So a lot of good examples today, especially with, with Mary, the mother of Jesus. All right, well, shall we pray? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, today we remember when the angel Gabriel visited Mary to tell her that she would be your mother. Help us to follow in your mother's example that we too would always put our trust in you. Amen. Okay, well, thanks for coming forward.
Well, I'm not, I'm just thinking, I might have to wing it. <laughs>
in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with an angel the multitude of the heavenly hosts, and praise of God, and say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, and good will toward men.
government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Again, we thank our children's Sunday school class. Um, again, Kristen Chen for putting that together. I would like to thank John Gregory. I, I would not want his job to be handling the, um, the technical stuff. So I, I know we had a hiccup or two, but I do appreciate his help with that. So all right, if you could please rise, our service continues with him 276.
with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O God. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend, give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. We ask that you would continue to guide scientists and doctors around the world, and we give you thanks for the progress that has been made in treatments for the COVID-19 virus. Hear us, O God. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. And we especially lift up those who are known to this congregation. We pray for Elizabeth, Hilda, Geraldine, Irene, Mike, Martha, Anthony, Mike, Kevin, Susan, Anthony, Sherry, Nelson, Maxine, and all those we now name aloud are in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for their bold leadership in our time. We give thanks for bold leadership in our time. Inspire others with we give thanks for their bold leadership of their time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God. Draw near to us, O God, and give our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember, gather us into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. 
the unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.